Christmas computer. Hello, thank you for joining us virtually for this panel discussion. I'm author and founder of the Right Women Book Fest and the Right Women Network, a private writing salon group for women on Facebook. Heather Brooks. Today, our panel will be discussing fat representation in fiction. On the panel, we have some very accomplished authors who write curvy women into their stories in fun, exciting, powerful, and sometimes naughty ways. This is where I would usually say, please welcome, and you'd all clap. But since we are virtual, we'll just have to ask you to leave comments so we know you stopped by. We have aspiring author, book talker, and founder of the Curvy Girls in Fiction website, Mary Warren, who is really getting this conversation going on TikTok and helped inspire this panel discussion. With us today is author Adi Award, USA Today bestselling author of Curvy Romance and Shifter Fiction. Author Leora Gonzalez, who writes contemporary romance, some of some of it with a sci-fi twist, aliens, in case you've been digging that alien fiction lately. And uh, we have also have we also have author Molly O'Hare, who writes the much beloved Stumbling Into Him series of curvy, dreamy romance. And I would like to congratulate her on her book, Learning Curve, hitting the USA Today bestseller list this past week. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> Thank you for being here and welcome. Um, I'm just going to start asking with a, a few questions. So Mary, uh, you first. Thank you for uh, bringing this topic up to TikTok. Can you tell us what inspired the discussion in the first place? Yeah, so I've always been a reader, but I hadn't until this January actually read a book with a fat main character that actually felt good. So I read the book Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade, and it just changed my entire view and I was like I need to read more of these books so I found them and then I was like I need to make lists of these books for people and then that has morphed into Fat Girls in Fiction which is an online community where readers and authors can come for um, better representation of fat people and it has kind of become a passion of mine to get to kind of bring the body positivity world and the literature world together because so many bigger stories start in fiction. So if we're going to get stories out there, we need better books that can be made into movies, that can be made into things so that fat people can see themselves on the page, on the screen, wherever they want that representation. That's kind of my goal is that fat people be able to see themselves in a positive light. And you started a whole website um, for it and the hashtag fat girls in fiction right hashtag fat girls in fiction and that's originated on tiktok so yeah. um by the way i will put everybody's ads and um information links and all that stuff with this video when i post the video so you'll be able to find all of these wonderful authors and their information so uh we're we appreciate that you got this i ended up seeing that on a i think her name's lex book talk or something I think it's Lex Book Talk. I, th I think I saw that first. Then I hopped over to your TikTok. This is what TikTok's good for book talk wise. Mm -hmm. um, there are other parts of TikTok I'm, <laughs> I'm less fond of, but book talk seems to be pretty, pretty good community. Um, and then I saw that. I was like, this is a conversation that needs to happen. Now, I'm a body positive person from way back before when it was called uh, fat uh, acceptance. So that's like, it used to be called fat <laughs> a long time ago. And, um, but uh, I appreciate that. So uh, that's what got this panel happening. And she sent me a list of authors that she enjoys and you all were on those lists. So um, that's why you are here. Um, Molly, what made you write your first Kirby romance? So uh, thanks for having me <laughs> first, but um, I'm, I'm super glad that we're having these discussions about um, just not just only fat representation in fiction, but just like overall just diversity. Um, but mine's a lot like how Mary was where I am an avid reader. Like I would read all the time, but I would never read a book that had someone that looked like me in it. And it was discouraging. And the books that I did find that said they were plus size weren't actually plus size. They were not to like, like call anything out, but Sometimes the authors would say a U.S. size eight was plus size. And to me, like, I was like, an eight is plus size in your world? Like, 
what am I, the state <laughs> of marshmallow man? Like, <laughs> it would totally just throw me off. And I just, I was so, I just really wanted to read books with people that looked like me because I deserve love just like everyone else. And, you know, bigger women, bigger bodies are humans too. So I just decided that I was kind of over it and I wrote my own books. And that's kind of like what it comes down to. Wonderful. I read um, Stumbling Into Him uh, by you and uh, I really enjoyed it. It was a, what I would call sort of like a hallmarky, you know, very, um, you know, cozy, but with spice. You know yeah. what I mean? So, <laughs> like if Hallmark was on Cinemax, maybe. Or so. <laughs> oh my God, I'm going to make that be my new tagline. <laughs> it was, it was definitely had spicy factors and, um, and it was, it was sweet and cute and naughty all at the same time. So, and in fact, um, just for the people watching, I read a book by uh, each of the authors. Mary has not written a book yet. She's aspiring. She's working heavily on her, um, on her website, but uh, I read a book by Ada Award, um, her book, uh, Unclaimed, which is a paranormal romance. And then I read um, Bridal Pact, which I found delightful by um, Leora. It was, uh, I've forgotten how much I liked. I just, let me back up a second, 80. I also write um, paranormal romance. Hey. So I, I definitely like the werewolf thing. Um, but uh, with Leora, I totally forgot how much I liked the whole, you wake up and there's aliens hovering in the sky thing. I forgot how much I love that. And then um, I, I kept not getting to the, getting to the end. I kept having an hour left on my thing. And I'm like, I got it. I, I, yesterday I was like, I, I'm not doing anything else until I read this because I have to know what happens. So um, <laughs> if you like that alien uh, aspect, but just a fair warning to everybody watching this, they all have very spicy bits in them. And um, I'm a fan of that. So it worked out well for me. Um, I think that uh, if you like curvy women in your stories and I would say um Leora your your character is extra curvy I wouldn't call her I mean she's plus size by American standards but she's right. definitely she's voluptuous she, she has more yeah. of an hourglass shape I think when you picture the curvy Poppy in in that first book um Poppy and her sister they're like 1820 is kind of the size that I, I shot for. I think that's the size that I was when I wrote it. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of went into it. Um, but yeah, they're, they're about an 1820. Most of my characters are at least a size 18 though. And some of them are, you know, up to a 24, 26, depending on which book you happen to fall into. Um, so. Yeah, I think that I, I, in my head, I was picturing more of like a 16 maybe but it doesn't but that's the thing too is like it's just that's a, one of the things that's interesting about when we say fat representation I think one of the things we have to talk about is or even in the continuing conversation in a whole nother panel is the idea that it's a sliding scale guys <laughs> to be pun you know punny or not you know I did not intend the pun but it's a sliding scale what one person thinks is fat is not necessarily fat to other people so um I think that when we have fat authors writing things like what is a fat author you know I mean who, who gets to decide that and it's just like beauty standards of all kinds who's deciding these things I think we know advertisers are the ones deciding but um I think the so, discussion about what size our heroines are um, it's a really interesting one because I get the question from readers all of the time. They'll message me and be like, but what size is she? Because they don't say what size she is. Um, and the last reader that emailed me, she's like, is she like a 16? Is she like a 24? Is she bigger like me? And I'm like, here's the thing. I don't say what size it is because I want you to be able to imagine she's your size. Mm -hmm. Said so that when I wrote it, I was imagining she was my size. And I think a lot of us do that, especially when we're, when we're trying to see more of ourselves in fiction, we're writing the way we wish the world could be. Mm -hmm. And I wish the world could be a lot more curvy girls, mm -hmm. whatever their size are, knowing that they can get the hot dude or the hot girl. Right. 
And then there's a whole other dis the, um, discussion around that. It's like the, the uh, fat women being allowed to decide what they find attractive or not. Well, if you're a fat woman and you're all about fat positivity and fat, you know, whatever, then why aren't you attracted to just fat men? And that is, that's a whole other topic. But then that, of course, that is the next course that people who are tend to be fat phobic that's their next thing that they go to as well. Well, why aren't you dating fat men? Well, you know, that is a whole other discussion that probably the people who ask that question aren't going to understand anyway. So it's kind of like, you have to, you have to decide where to put your energy. It's like, to, am I going to go over here and talk to you about why, you know, I'm not dating fat men, or are we going to, I'm going to spend my energy trying to talk to people who need to hear what I have to say and who want to connect with me. So uh, Leora, a topic I saw you bring up on TikTok was how your book cover designs, mm -hmm. designers are having a hard time finding plus size models for their covers. And you had put out a call to help to remedy that. Um, tell us more about that. That was kind of my entrance to TikTok because I hadn't really book talk in particular, because I hadn't really been on the app very much. It scared me. Um, so when I went into it, I basically was like, well, I, I don't have really much to say, but at the time I had been looking for a cover and I, I just got pissed off. Um, I was looking for a plus size female. Well, first I was looking for a plus size female featured with a rom a male in like a romantic pose, which that's like a, freaking unicorn. You can't find it. It doesn't exist. Um, so I was like, okay, well, I'll just look for a plus size female. And I would like for her to be, cause I write characters that I am similar to. I wanted her to be Latina. That was, you know, that's when you started getting like made advertisements popping up in the search engines. I know, right. It's crazy. Um, but a lot of what I was seeing, I wish I could was, I was surprised. right. Uh, it was, it was just, it was very upsetting to me mm -hmm. and I wasn't able to find what I wanted. Um, because, you know, if you've taken a gander at some of the covers that do have the females on them that are like, you know, actual like photo shoots, there's probably around five to 10 women. They're all the same. Have you guys seen them? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe 10. And the, they're freaking gorgeous, but I didn't want the exact same female regurgitated on my cover because a lot of them are like sci-fi or paranormal and it has the moon behind them. And I'm like, no, it's going to look exactly like somebody else's cover. So I had put out a TikTok being like, am I not looking in the right spot as an indie author? Because we all get kind of pushed to Shutterstock or deposit photos. Because that's kind of what I think that our budgets pay for. Because um, I know I can't afford a photo shoot. And I had a lot of suggestions from readers who are like, oh, well, you know, have a friend do a photo shoot. I've seen the photos I've taken and that's not going to work. So um, I, I did have some ladies send me some photos and it was funny that we mentioned like, you know, everybody has the sliding scale of what they deem fat because I had a lot of people uh, send me photos that I'm thinking, oh, she's not plus size at all. Like she's gorgeous, but mm -hmm. I want like a belly outline and like face fat. Like I don't want your face to be skinny and then it just doesn't, I want somebody that looks realistically like a fat person that you would right. see on the street because you don't see that lady that's getting groceries. You know, you don't see her in a romance novel. You see Tess Holiday, and she's gorgeous. She's gorgeous, but not everybody has that model fat aura. You know what I mean? Because right. I think it's very specific to... Um, plus size people that do have the skinnier faces without the extra chin. You really mm -hmm. don't see a whole lot of that anyways, like none of the plus size models. And then none of them had in the photos that they had visible like belly outlines. Um, a majority of them were also featured with like a measuring tape. Like it was a diet advertisement. Like they had like an apple. Or a salad in their lap. Or a salad. Or right. it was like, it was like the, they had the donut and you're like, okay. <laughs> I know this is the before picture, isn't it? 
Yeah, it, it just, it was just disheartening. But TikTok and Book Talk, I mean, yep, they really stepped. They stepped up like it was, they were coming out of the woodwork and I, I, loved it. I actually had, um, an author, she'd messaged me cause she'd seen that TikTok and she was like, Hey, I have, um, a cover photo of a gal that she has tattoos and she's plus size. I've already paid for the image. Do you, if you want it, I'll give it to you. And it's really rad. So now she's, I'm going to be doing a book for that one. So, I mean, it's like, I'm digging it. I, I really appreciate just the response overall because it's amazing. That's good. I think that um, what a lot of people are resorting to is illustration mm -hmm. because it's just hard to find the photographs. I use um, I use some you know the stock photography sites, but you're right. There's it's all I would have to Photoshop them to make them look bigger. Yeah, and that's actually not. It's actually really hard to do. Um, in, in a lot of ways, but, uh, I, what I ideally do is I take photos for my own covers because I've been a photographer, I can do that, but, um, and then I don't have to worry about rights and things like that, but being an author itself is complicated. Being a woman author complicates it doubly. And then being, you know, um, having plus size, uh, the part of, I think part of the problem is, is that not as is they're not as available because people think they won't sell so they're not as available traditionally published so a lot of plus size authors are um indie published because mm -hmm. traditional publishers don't want that unless there's a specialty publishing house out there somewhere that does that i'm not aware of it but um so so that was good i'm glad that you got good responses i hope that it will inspire somebody to do some stock photography and in fact if you are a photographer out there watching this you made your way to the right women book festival because you're interested in this panel or you know a photographer there is a need for plus size women representing across races and various sizes for you to uh have a if you get that going send us a link we will we will tell everybody so um uh 80 uh i read your werewolfy and now on your cover is a as a, a nice curvy maybe like 2022 20, there it is there she is uh-huh and you, I see you have wolves <laughs> a little, little booty going there um, I, I felt like that photo looked very much like me, uh, you know, like I could, I could project myself onto that cover very well. Uh, the, um, tell us how you got started writing uh, curvy woman centered stories. At, and I'm sure that it has something to do like the rest of us not seeing it represented. Um, is that basically your story or do you have a, you know, what is your, your author origin story? No, that, that was a big part of it. Um, I didn't start writing until I was probably in my thirties. Um, and this first story that I started writing because we write a lot, especially when we're writing our first books, we're writing ourselves in that first book. And so I wrote a, a world that I wanted to be that girl. So I had to write that girl. Um, and that is a manuscript that's under the bed somewhere, never to see the light of day. Um, but my first published book, I wrote a book because I saw a cover and I was like, I'm writing that because it had, it was an illustrated because back in the, the last round of when illustrated covers were popular, um, plus size girl, and it was called, you know how the cover designers come up with these cute names that are the fake titles, and then you change it to whatever you want, but I loved it so much, I kept it, it was called Curvy Temptation, and was like, but wait, you can have a curvy girl be tempting? Like what? Um, and it was very clearly um, a naughty book was what this illustration was. And I was like, wait, she can be like in a BDSM club? I'm going to write that book. So I literally wrote a book to go with a cover and I brought it so I can show you. She's still super highly sexualized. Yeah. <laughs> Kirby temptation. I love she it. She still has the super skinny waist, but she's got hips. And I was mm -hmm. like, What? So I wrote a super not super naughty book w because of this cover. And I was like, eh, I'll just publish that on a lark. And then people were like, I want to read that. <laughs> but you do? 
it's such a good I will book. write more. <laughs> like it's such that was my first book that I read by you, and it oh. is such a good book. It was one of the very first books of a plus size woman. Like, yes, I know the cover. She's very like she does have the skinny waist like that. Um, but it was one of the very first books that I read that ha- had an actual plus size. Like, because even though the cover had that the representation inside of the book didn't necessarily match what the cover had. And I, it was probably one of the very first books that I read that I could see myself in. And that was years and years and years ago. But it was- And that is legitimately why I wrote plus size books because nobody was telling. So I think probably the first plus size heroine that I ever read in a book was Penelope Featherington in um, Romancing Mr. Bridgerton. Um, and I was like, wait, I didn't, you can have, you can be fat in, in a romance. Wait, what? A revelation. Right. It was a revelation, but Penelope in a historical is very like, she's badass, but she's also subdued and sweet and like, I love their romance, but I wanted something spicy. Um, and you don't, you, there was nobody writing that. There's still not very many. Um, because I think so many plus size women get the message that we are not sexual beings. And I was like, well, guess what? Yes, 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 we are. Yeah. Um, and so that is why I wrote that series the way that I did, because I wanted a fat girl getting with the super hot guy for super hot sexy times. Yeah. And I, I think that's a good message that people can get from these books. Uh, and everybody's got a different level of what it is they like in Spice, you know, and, and whether they want heteronormative or whether they want polyamorous or whatever. 80, your book was very um, multi-partnerish <laughs> because of the werewolf aspect of it. Um, I For me, like I've been a I've been a body positivity activist since the late 90s and I kind of got tired actually at some point I was like I'm tired of just being the confident fat person like you know a lot of people would would kind of like go how is she so confident and like you know because you ha- I had to get over it I had to work hard to get over that that stuff and then and then it was like I was kind of got tired of being like everything being about me being confident and fat and then now I'm getting older and I'm realizing there's a very real correlation to the way I felt the, um, when I was trying to get over people judging me for being fat and now people getting, uh, getting over people judging me for being older. So like, like as an aging woman who's over 50, um, we also are not viewed as sexual beings. In fact, I think once you hit 40, it starts just going downhill from there. Um, and I think that these kinds of stories are important because they carry through that thread of, of not just plus size. We're not just talking about plus size here. We're talking about um, women owning their, their sensuality and, and sexuality and being able to express themselves and feel like that they are deserving of love, deserving of good sex, you know, deserving of caring, loving, great partners. And that is what these kinds of books, I think, set things up for. Um, uh, One of the things I really liked about your book, Leora, was um, the Bridal Pack book, even though your book was very uh, heteronormative, just for anybody interested in that, that is uh, very, very much what that book has in it. And um, the, one of the things I loved about it, and I don't know if other people, I don't know if you intended this, but this, it was very much like, like the layer of, okay, this alien, these alien men warriors, but it kind of, it was like, this is kind of what men are like, <laughs> and like, this is kind of what women are like. Like if you yeah. go with just the basic men are, men are from Mars, women are from Venus in yeah. a very literal way. Yeah. It's kind of like the, you're going, would you just communicate? And, yeah. and I think that having been in that, um, in that situation where sometimes men and, you know, I love men, I'm married to one, um, that sometimes 
you have to you have to tell them sometimes what it is you want. Now I'm not we're, I'm being very gender you know roles here. Um, with there's still that still exists. So at least uh, in my lifetime, uh, I've had that experience. And that my my past partner is very much like I I think I recognized it because I was like. I have been here. I have been, I did not date an alien, but it felt like I was dating an alien at times. And I really loved that. Did you intend that in there? Like this is, Mm. this is very literal alien men, but um, she had to teach him a lot. I'm married to a college professor (laughs) that um, his like main focus is like computers and um, the drone things. You see, I don't understand anything he ever says to me, and I'm pretty sure he doesn't understand anything that I tell him. So, um, yeah, it's, it, yeah, that kind of, he, yeah. I have that, to laugh. Pretty because much just exactly, comes over. That's exactly how my husband and I am as well. Like, he is an energy manager. Like, he's an energy engineer person. Um, <laughs> I love him. I'm super proud of him, but he talks to me, and I'm like, what are you saying? Yeah, like, what are the words that are coming out of your mouth? And then I'm just like, mm-hmm. I, yeah. good job. If, you enjoy, if you enjoy that kind of, and I do, if you enjoy that, oh, men are so frustrating sometimes. How can we get them to understand? How can we get them to better communicate? It's, that's a layer in, in your book, I think, at least it, there was for me. Sometimes I don't know what an author intended. I just know what I'm picking up on. Um, but I really liked that. <laughs> One thing that you'll notice, because Bridal Pact is the first book in a series. So as the women start kind of, you know, mingling into the fate and race, they start picking up like little bits and sayings, but they don't particularly like understand or grasp them completely so things get said that are just like huh um like the the women I remember she was like you about made me crap my pants at one point and he was like what did she just say and (laughs) no there's like there's a communication here thing going on but you know I had to I put myself into it because not everything is like Star Wars based where everybody knows what's going on you know what I mean um, cause it seemed like on, in sci-fi in particular, you know, there seems to be kind of a, a general knowledge that goes throughout all the planets and things. And I'm thinking earth is crazy. <laughs> like if an alien were to come here, which, you know, maybe, <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, but I have a feeling they'd be very confused. Yeah. I, us just in general, overall. If okay. they're smart enough to get here, they're definitely going to be confused. Right. They're going to be very confused. <laughs> and so I, I kind of had that play into it. But over time, it, it's funny to watch the different characters kind of adapt to humans and the slang that they use. So I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was funny. Well, I do, Rick. I, I, Molly, I think you would like her book. Um, I think. Oh, that I'm, kind of- <laughs> I'm going to one click it as soon as we're done. <laughs> and, and Molly, um, so for your, your book that I read, which was. Um, wait a minute it's escaping oh uh stumbling into him um I loved that the character was the the main character was um klutzy and like um adorable in her klutziness like there's one line where it says she tripped up the stairs I've done that I've done that and so on top of being plus size and sometimes I think I'm just not aware of my hips or whatever you know and you're bumping into things like okay make room for mama but um I love that she was klutzy and that he so aside from her this I would say your book is for great for somebody who's just getting into the idea of women plus size women as sexually desirable because it has a lot of that early I'm not worthy. Why is this hot guy into me? Like, whereas 80s character was more like, you know, she just, she got what she wanted, what she expected and whatever. Whereas your character, your main character, I would say, Holly, Holly and Molly, Holly was more um, like, if you were, if you were just going to get your toes dipped into the pool of curvy romance, I think your book is a really good place to start because I think it can acclimate women who are in that place of, I'm not worthy, um, or I'm, um, 
I'm getting used to the idea that I am a sexual being and I deserve good sex and attention from a sexy man. And I think that your book is really good for that. And it's got a lot of adorable moments in it too, a lot of humor. Um, and uh, 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 Leora, I keep wanting to call you a Leora because you're of your handle on um, online. Um, Leora and AD, you're both of your characters were, were both like, yeah, I'm, I'm pervy, whatever. I'm yeah. they're confident pervy. Whereas um, uh, Molly's character was more like, mm, I, do I deserve this? So I, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of bad. Is any, is that okay? You know? And I think that that would be a good, a good, a great romance. I think everybody should pick up all y'all's books for the fall and curl up and read those first books from you. Um, of course, I want to know, um, I know Mary, we're kind of leaving you out of this conversation. I don't have a book for it to talk about with you, but you feel free to jump in if you have something to say, okay? Um, I know that you're, um, just by the way, everybody, uh, Mary's uh, website, fatgirlsinfiction.com, correct? Yeah, yep. has um, lists of all of these kinds of books. And I assume it's gonna kind of have like a, a blurb or a teaser, like a like a what it's about. <laughs> Yeah, for we have for every book we have listed, we have what it's about. We have so all of these three wonderful ladies are featured authors. So there's little biographies. It's set up into if you want to find a romance book or a fantasy book, I think there's like, you know, four. <laughs> because so please, if you for, are and and you don't have to be a fat girl to read uh, no. romance with fat women in it. You can have you can read these. These books are romance books that happen to have fat characters and occasionally that's brought to attention just so that their representations there but these these books are great books regardless of you know you don't have to be fat to enjoy them or read them um, and then it's also like lists for like um body positivities and blogs about the ideas of blending body positivity and what good representation looks like because some of the representation out there is more harmful than it is helpful. So I have a lot what of- What would you consider that right harmful now. representation? Oh, Molly, tell the butter story. Uh, I'm sorry, Mary, to cut you off, but <laughs> <laughs> it's just, but it's a, it definitely needs to be talked about. So I know how, Heather, you were just saying like the stumbling series is kind of for that. Um, that was my second book. So like a lot of like in that, series it's more of a like is it okay for me to be who I am kind of book but in my other books like learning curves or anything like that it's very like confident of who you are because I think we are who we are so you should be confident that's your in what USA Today bestseller yeah that was yeah so like my newer like so that stumbling series is kind of more of that is it okay to be who I am so it is a very good stepping stone however um, I, like, I read a lot of plus size romance because that is what I am. So I like to see myself in the books. And I came across a book that it was a, a nothing against the author. Um, but she, we, can, we was, could not name, not no, we, we I would, I didn't even it, do it yeah. when I talked about it because I'm not that person. Okay. Um, but she is not of the plus size variety. Okay. I mean, she wrote a plus size character and okay. I, inside of her, I'm not sure she uh, definitely, I think she changed it because of the the reviews that she had gotten. I didn't review or anything. I was just very upset. She thought that a plus size woman, when they were hungry, had to go to the fridge and eat two sticks of butter. And that's what plus size women, yeah, the faces, yeah. Eighty knows that my- Gosh, my, it's been my, ages my, since I ate a stick of butter. <laughs> like, it was just, it was, the book was written in such a way to show bigger women as monsters versus actual people that I was like so taken aback that I was like uh, I had to reread it like three times the area you have to because email I just, me the title of this I'm like it, it was now. just it was it that's where like the poor representation is because like if and I was mad so I'm very confident in who I am and like my characters after the first book, it, Holly's and Stumbling to Him, like Stumbling into Forever, Stumbling into the Holidays, like she's super confident who she is. She loves who she is. My other characters, like Nothing But a Dare, like all of them, they're like super, hey, this is who I am and I love who I am. I'm not a monster because I just have a bigger body. And that is something that I ran into a lot. And just the butter one is the one that really just, I can't, it's been a year since I've read that book and it's still. Still mad, still mad. 
It's part of what I love about Mary's TikTok because I literally will go on and be like, oh, Mary has a new book I haven't heard of. Wait, is it good fat representation? Because I get so mad when I read the ones that aren't. Like I have a, I have a friend who's a super prolific reader, reads way more than I do. And I will tell her, hey, will you read this book for me and tell me if it's okay? And now Mary does that for us. And I'm like, thank goodness. And there's just such a difference. So recently I just read these two YAs and they both had similar tenants. Like each one kind of had a bully. Each one had, you know, so there are ways to do those, but this one was just so intense. Like it basically had like an attempted murder and she just hated herself so much. Like it was just such a negative headspace with the self-hatred. And so, yeah, the, it was very poignantly written. And in the last 10% of the book, she did find some form of self-love, but that doesn't make up for the pain of reading the first 90% of the book as a fat person. And you I think, think that's content warnings possible. would help um, in this regard. Like a lot of times we do content warnings for sexual violence. And I, I'm, in fact, my series, my Red August series, which is the paranormal romance, um, I'm going to be redoing my covers so it looks more like it's got spice in it, but also to add content warnings because I feel like I, I wrote that first book like seven years ago and, it feel, and before content warnings were really a big thing. But I do think that content warnings um, are on something like that. Like as a, as a the, the, the going from, I think it sounds like you're saying it was a good book and it had a good arc and that she eventually came to a place of self-love. And so there are probably fat women who would want to read that um, but, you know, and also thin people who maybe don't know what it's like to be a fat person, but, um, do you think a content warning would be a, a better way to handle that kind of material? Yeah, I think a content warning, yes, but I think you also need content. I've also read books that do handle those, but not in a way that is harmful. I think those books need content warnings, but I also think we need to question ourselves when we're writing a book. What is the purpose of this pain I'm inflicting on this character? Because at some point, it's so much pain that you're no longer trying to make the point that it hurts to be a fat person. You're just writing about suffering for people who suffer in those bodies enough. And I, I feel, think that it's yeah. irresponsible. That's how I feel about The Walking Dead. I had to stop watching that show. <laughs> I do, you, I, no hate, hate for anybody that loves The Walking Dead, but I had to stop watching that show. So <laughs> I do have to agree with Mary, though, because like, so there's, I feel like, okay, so as bigger women, like we are kind of, we're not sexualized, like we talked about. And there is that growing phase that we all go through where we have situations that have happened to us where it's like almost definitely society and definitely like advertising and all that stuff has thrown it into our heads that we're not good enough. So there is that struggle with, I think us as just human beings that we're like, we're told so much that we're not good enough that there is books out there and there are things like that come across that it is good to be able to like maybe cathartically like just read through that like if there is like okay I don't feel like I am society's norm so why am I why are you where's the joke like where's the joke in you liking me now because I don't understand because society has told me that I'm not good enough now I like there's definitely books that do that really well and then there's books that I understand where Mary's coming from that are very much she hates herself, she's horrible, she doesn't get over it. And then the last five pages of the book, she all of a sudden loves herself and I she's see. with the really hot guy where it is important to like go through that pain. Like, you know, we we do feel that, especially if you are a plus size woman and you are in the realm of this and you're just trying, you're, you're just a human trying to live. Mm -hmm. Whether you're plus size, you're straight size, you're whatever you are, you're just a human on this earth trying to live. And so we do have those instances, but I, I, I can kind of see where Mary's saying it would be nice to have sometimes those trigger warnings where it's like, or the content warnings or something. Cause yeah, like I've had times where I'm like, well, I'm not good enough. Like, why does my husband like, like, that's weird. Like I'm told my whole life that I'm not good enough. I don't meet society's norms like I don't this that and everything so those are struggles that I have written into my books and have written like just in general so then 
you know, I do think that readers can very much empathize with that and see themselves in those kind of things. But there are times where it gets overdone. And that's where you can get the books that like, the eating two sticks of butter, <laughs> like those kind of things. And that's, that is very harmful. Like that, that whole circumstance would just, I use the two sticks of butter because it's literally just in your, I can't, to this day, I can't. Mary, Mary, maybe you can have a review of how bad something is by how many sticks of butter it gets. Oh, my gosh. oh that would be hilarious. <laughs> I do see all of the reviews I write about the books that are on my blog, like, I don't review, like a lot of the, re I don't review the stories. I review the fat representation so that right. if someone wants to know what they're getting into, they can read the review on my site. And I'm, I'm honest in what that representation looks like. So that's there because I've read a lot of, this year I've read over, I think I'm coming up on 130 fat main characters and <laughs> some of them are terrible, like are bad for my mental health. And I am someone who is pretty far down the journey on body acceptance and self-love. But we so. appreciate your hard work on that <laughs> website. Thank you. I think there's a, an, an interesting conversation in um, the evolution of stories about fat women, though, um, because I think, especially as fat writers, I think a lot of us start from that place of we don't accept ourselves and we're putting that on the page. And I think a lot of times you can kind of see where an author is at in their own acceptance of their own self with what's on the page. Um, I read a book recently that um, it was a paranormal women's fiction, which a lot of the issues in that are the issues of being over 40. And a lot of times that also includes being chubby. And it was so clear to me on the page that she was trying for fat representation. And I know the author and she's a larger author. Um, and she very clearly does not like herself and her body. And I could tell that in the story. Um, but I think, I think a lot of us, when we first start writing large people in our stories, we're dealing with that issue in ourselves. And then, I mean, it's, it's, it's almost therapy for ourselves because I definitely like myself way better 30 books later. And I can, I can now write characters like I did in Unclaimed where she just is big and she's badass. Mm -hmm. But my first books, they were big and they were not badass. And they had to deal with why would anybody love me? And I think, I think there's an evolution of story that way because I think if you also look at the books that were coming out in, say, the early 2000s that actually had fat representation in them, they were all stories of how I don't love myself and how could somebody else love me. But we've evolved. And I think part of that is because of the fat acceptance and body positivity movements. We can actually write books now where we don't have to talk about the fat story of how I, I accepted myself. We don't have to write that anymore. Right. I couldn't agree more with that. Like I just like the fact that you say that therapy is like for us when we're writing it. So my very first, like, I, I mean, it's very known. I used to be an actor. So like I, I used to act like I was TV film and stuff. And I was always cast as the funny fat friend, but Hollywood was not a great place. And it really messed with my mind really, really bad. Like I, to the point where I had casting directors be like, you'd be perfect if you lost 90 pounds in a month and I'll give you the role. And it really, really messed with me to a point of just not okayness. So my very first book was about Hollywood and what it did to a curvy woman. And I used that as my, ther I literally, I say that book all the time is my therapy book because it let me process the actual words that were said to my face about the way that I looked, I would get, you look, you're, oh, you represent this character perfectly. You're so, you, you, you know exactly what we want, but you're too okay. fat. And that would just kill me at times. Cause I'd be like, but you're telling me I'm great for this, but I'm not, I don't look a, like a certain way. So like that book was my therapy. That's and a then choice I moved, for that. You didn't have, that? the character didn't have to be thin. They just didn't want yeah, to have the fat they decided, person. Yeah, they decided I wasn't good enough because of the way that I looked. So I would use my books then. Like, I always joke how writing was never my career. Like, that's, like, so weird to me that it happened that way. Because I was, I still do improv to this day. Like, I do stuff, like, on stage. And, like, those things were just what I was. 
but I used that like that book and then like the stumbling series where it was like is she okay to be fat because I thought I was coming off of being a you know an actor in Hollywood where it wasn't okay to be anything over a size four and if you were a size four you were looked at like a monster like well, and because and, that is the representation in media everywhere yeah it was it's horrible it's not but we all think that about ourselves yeah so, and I love that the evolution of the arc of like like and I know in your books I've read all of your books and I know in my books like you know that very first book is very painful that I wrote of mine because it was words that were literally said to myself like to I say to myself or they were said to me and then I look at my last book that I wrote like or even just like learning curves and I'm like she doesn't give a crap like she's like this is who I am if you don't like who I am at my size that's a you problem and not a me problem yeah. and I think that that's been the evolution over the past four or five years because you like you do see I mean it's not perfect and I will 100% say that but like you do see more representation you're seeing more diversity you're more you're seeing more things in media and print and everything and that's made it so that like us as plus size authors can go around and be like, yeah, I'm gonna write me a badass plus size person. And you got a problem with that. That's a you problem, not a me problem. Go find another book or write your own, like that kind of stuff. And I think that's what we all have that therapy of, we write what we know, like my books, for example, and my, my husband reads my stuff and we always joke, they're 90% me. Like <laughs> my books are 90, like he'll come in and be like, you said this last week. And I was like, I did say that last like, week. You better watch out because it's going to be in a book <laughs> kind of thing. Or he's well, like, you fell up the stairs yesterday. You fell out of the bed two days ago. Like those kind of things. So Molly, and, what, can you tell us about what your next coming, pro in fact, let's go in order. Let's go Molly in my visual order here, Molly, and then 80, and then we'll have uh, Leora finish things off because we're getting, um, close to time but Molly can you tell us about your whatever your your latest project that you're working on and then we'll just do the same thing with 80 and then Leora please I'm sure. curious where where we're headed um for Maybe. the for those things yeah sure I mean um right now I'm working on a holiday story for um I love holiday I have, stories. <laughs> yeah I have a characters I love my characters I can't get rid of them I don't know why I can't <laughs> they can't, I can't stop I have to continue to write them and I don't know I it's fine but I have a holiday story that's coming out of my tease by fire series where she loves like paranormal stuff like Bigfoot and aliens and like all those things and her spouse is like you're not okay but will you I love you <laughs> So I decided to write them and she's obsessed with the holidays like in like in their house they have holidays up all like time like Christmas is her favorite thing so I'm working on that along with like 10 other projects at the same time but that is what I'm working on right now. That sounds fantastic I cannot wait to see that now these are these are characters I've not heard of this is not are you doing anything with Holly um coming up? Oh. Holly and Ben got a holiday story. So every year around in December, I want to give two of my characters a holiday book. So last year was Holly and Ben and they got stumbling into the holidays. And then okay. this year is teased by Fall, uh, Fire, Hank and Olive, and they're getting their holiday story. And then next year will be another set of characters. I love that because I love holiday stories. So <laughs> awesome. I'm going to pick up that, that holiday one with Holly and Ben. That's going to be on my fall reading schedule. Aidy, can you tell us what's coming um, up? I just here? released a book a couple of days ago called Cocky Doc Wolf. It's um, a spinoff that I did. Uh, I co-wrote with Piper Fox. Um, where it's uh, werewolves who go to college and play football and fall in love with nerdy curvy girls. Um, it's a novella series. So that just came out a couple of days ago. It's a very fun story. Um, and then I'm right now I'm working on book two in the Fate of the Wolf Guard Reverse Harem series. The Unclaimed is book one. So I'm working on book two on that and that'll be a trilogy that I'm trying to get them all three out this year. So is that's Is there what's a coming. second one in that? It's unclear. There is not a second one yet. I mean, I'm super mean and I left book one on a big old cliffhanger. <laughs> okay. I thought I saw an ad for unclaimed and then untamed. I mean, you probably did because okay. I would like you to pre-order untamed. Right. But... <laughs> okay, good. Then I'm not crazy. I did, well, no, not about I'm that writing anymore, untamed so. right now. Um, okay. And so it'll, it'll come out in um, October. 
Awesome. Perfect for, for paranormal stuff. October is perfect for that. Um, Leora, can you uh, close us out with what you um, are working, what, where, um, how many more books are left in this alien series that I started and if it's going anywhere else and then what other projects you might be working on coming up. So I am a total pantser and I don't even know where this series is going. Right now I am working on the next book in the Warriors of Phaeton series, but as this is like come out, I've had a spinoff for my Miners of Jaramir series. And my next release is actually going to be um, a novella that's in a box set, a 99 cent box set. So it's less than a Snickers is how I'm like pitching it to everybody. I'm like, it's less than a candy bar. It's less than a candy bar. Um, but it's chosen by an alien and it's going to have the first book in my Space Nap for Fire series in it. Um, basically, the Miners of Jaramir series had like a group of women that were kidnapped and rescued by these aliens. And then from there it picked up. But this new series is revisiting the initial women that never got their story because I think they deserve it. So it's kind of a, a throwback to a group of original space nappies, which is why it's space napped for fire. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my ah, next release. So I'm really, I'm really excited about it because um, it's going in a box set with, I think 20 other books. And I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping we get some, I want to, I want to get more readers into the curvy girl, fat girls in fiction bubble. I, I think a lot more people need to be introduced to that. Tell me, I, I know this is about um, fat women and everybody's been well represented here with their books. I think that these books are, are something, again, like I said, people who aren't curvy can enjoy, but especially curvy women can enjoy. But I am curious how you got, uh, I understand the paranormal fairy tale thing because that's how I am in the, the classic sort of a um, hallmarky, but how did you get into aliens? I, I, like I said, forgot how much I enjoyed that genre and I am really loving so, it. Is that was strictly what you write in? Um, no, I have some contemporary out as well. Um, I am a huge sci-fi nerd, like uh, in just sci-fi movies, all of that in general. My husband and I were married in a movie theater. Uh, and oh, as, we awesome. were, as we were leaving, it was like the Imperial March from Star Wars. So it's, it's one of those things where sci-fi has always been a big part of my life. And um, one of the very first sci-fi romances that I ever read was Joanna Lindsay's Warriors Woman. Remember, do you remember that one? Had like the Fabio guy on the front. And um, it was just such a wonderful sci-fi romance that I, I kind of fell in love with it, but there really wasn't a whole lot around. And even less if you put like a, a fat chick in it, it it's non-existent. And so when I thought at Bridal Pact, I was like, we just need to leave Earth to find, you know, worthy males is what pretty much needs to happen. And so that's the direction that I went with it in. We well, get I get that it. sometimes. <laughs> right? Leave it all behind. Just, we'll just yeah. leave it all behind. Mary, when is your book going to come out? Yes. Uh, oh, I, I forgot that you were writing a book. So tell us about your book, well, Mary. In March, I will have coming out, it's a fat and fierce anthology for fat women in fantasy. And it's a lot of other book talkers who have all done short stories. And the cover is just gorgeous. It's just this like fat warrior. And I think it's important because fantasy and other genres besides romance are utterly lacking any fat representation. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's coming out. And then I am finishing up my book, which is kind of a whimsical romantic comedy where it takes kind of like, I liked Outlander, but I do not like the sexual violence in Outlander. So I brought the Highlander to the present date. So instead of like battling for her safety, he's going to battle the New York subway to bring her cookies on a bad day. Like it's going to be that. So Cute. Those are what I'm working on right now. But I'm sorry, I when I last talked to you, it sounded like you were way far away from even making a book. Now it sounds like just in the last couple of months since I first talked to you, you've made so much progress. Your website yeah. wasn't even up when I first talked to you. That was only like two months ago. So it's, amazing, it's good, good progress there. Um, yeah, the anthology comes out in March. So 
Okay, great. Um, I want to thank all of you for raising awareness and writing awesome books so plus size women can see themselves represented in fiction. Um, you can find all of us on TikTok, Instagram. We all have websites. Uh, I will put all pertinent links and information in the uh, video description. Uh, I definitely want to encourage you to go watch their, um, you know, follow their content, like their content, share their content. Uh, we appreciate you all watching and joining us for the Right Women Book Fest Fat Representation and Fiction panel. Please leave us some comments and questions. Um, maybe we'll do another one of these and answer your questions because uh, we are not done with this topic. So thank you so much for joining us for the Right Women Book Festival, uh, Fat Women in Fiction, Fat Representation in Fiction panel. Hope to see you at the festival. <laughs>